let's move ahead and explore what is power query editor and um, what um, what task we can do it with power query editor we'll explore it now so these are the common data transformations uh, that we usually perform in any of the analytics project okay this is the common data pre-processing steps for example you have duplicate records in a data set <clears throat> you'll have to remove it if you have the duplicate records in your data set it can lead to double counting or triple counting okay and apart from this uh, the commonly um, faced issues such as your columns are not assigned with the correct data type you need to make sure that all the columns which you are going to use it in your given data set are uh, there in the correct format okay correct uh, data type and uh, <clears throat> the values in your data set also uh, consistent uh, across the rows. For example, you have, um, uh, like I have shown you in the date column, few uh, records you could see that in the date column, they've used the delimiter, uh, the month year, uh, you know, for, to distinguish the month uh, year date, right? They use the forward slash as a delimiter. In some cases, they've used the iPhone. Okay, so the value is supposed to be consistent. And of other examples, like uh, in the country column, you have United States, whereas somewhere they mentioned USA. So in that case, what will happen is when you do aggregation based on the country column, it will not show the data correctly. Okay, it will, uh, you know, it will it'll downplay the sales, uh, total sales you made, right? Because there are some transactions um, that will get, um, um, absorbed as part of United States. There are some transaction related total sales will get absorbed as part of USA. So in that case, the data got splitted here and there, right? So the, there is no uh, consistency there. Hence, data exploration is very, very important. And then, <clears throat> right, you proceed with uh, addressing any data related issues. Okay, before we create the reports, it is important that we make sure that we are exploring the data related quality. If the quality of the data is not you know, is not good, then we need to address it first, and then only we need to proceed with creating the data model or creating the reports. <clears throat> Otherwise, your reports will show inaccurate results. And filtering, selecting only specific rows or columns, wherever it is required, um, wherever it is applicable, use filtering. Otherwise, uh, it will literally slow down your report performance. We are, remember that we are working with humongous amount of data, not with uh, 100 rows, 1000 rows, or 25,000 rows. It's all in terms of you know, millions and billions. Hence, make sure that you split the data or uh, you take the subset of the data, subset of the columns and all, okay? So whatever the columns that are required for your report, make sure that you are having it in your data set, um, at least in your query, okay? And uh, select only the subset of the data. Uh, and splitting, right? Splitting a column. And this is another common uh, ETL process we do it. Not all the time the data will be available in a separate column. <clears throat> For example, you have the date column and you want to perform time based analysis, time intelligence. Okay. The, for that, you need to store the year separately, month separately, quarter, and day separately. So, in that kind of situations, the exist, based on the existing column, you need to create additional columns. And the next one is joining. So again, uh, the data are not available in a single source system. Nowadays, the data are available in different source systems. You need to join all the relevant uh, data sets uh, so that um, your data will have the unified information in it, okay? And apart from this, these are the common tasks that we do it, you know, the cleaning, uh, mapping null to zero, wherever null is there in your data set, make sure that you replace it with zero in the case of numeric column. In the case of uh, string, we don't have to worry about that uh, because in the case of uh, text data type, even if you have blank value in it, it, that will be considered as a string data type, okay? Blank is uh, not a blank. In the case of text column, it is a string data type, okay? Still it is, empty string is also considered as a value, but whereas in the numeric column, if you have a null blank values in it, you, know, you need to replace it with zero <coughs> because when you do aggregation, if you have null in it, it will throw an error, okay, in, in the Power BI, okay. And also there are some cases, um, we replace the M by mail to give additional context or the other way around, okay. Uh, again, it depends on your project requirement, you need to do it. 
So um, before we proceed with um, creating the report also, make sure that your data is clean. Data pre-processing is one of the important tasks that is where we spend, you know, believe me or not, 50 to 55 percentage of the time. Because the volume of the data is very high, huge and uh, the data are available in different source systems. You need to combine them, you need to join them and joining the data and pulling the data, it takes a lot of time. <coughs> <coughs> Apart from this missing values, in case you have any missing values in your columns, make sure that uh, you, know, you have too many values or too many rows uh, for that column have missing values. And in that case, obviously you need to go back and ask your customer. So in that case, you need to you know, get back to your uh, customer before you start, the, start creating the report. Don't uh, jump in creating the report as soon as you get the data from the uh, application owners also, okay? But first check whether all the co the columns that you are going to use it in your report creation, right? Or uh, make sure that all the columns are uh, having the oh. values, any duplicate values. Make sure that you are going to remove the duplicate records. And also missing values. If you have, if you find too many missing values in the business columns, uh, right? So you can you need to uh, get back to your source system application one and tell them, hey, these are the uh, for example. The price column, we could see a lot of missing values are there. In the quantity column, we have a lot of missing values are there. So you just you know get back to them immediately. Don't proceed with creating the report. Okay. Probably you can create a report um, in the interest of time, but um, you know, after you create the report design, everything you know if you <clears throat> blindly to deploy it or if you uh, tell them that you have complete the report, right? It is not good. You know, you know, so if you have any problems, you can get back to them at the earlier stage itself. Okay, okay. the question is, okay, missing values are there in the case of uh, data science. What we do is uh, we do the data imputation. Data imputation is nothing but replacing the missing value with some meaningful data in it. Okay, so but again, we use some kind of conditional condition based mean and all. So, but uh, in the case of data analytics, usually what we do is um, if the missing values are that we definitely go back to the customer and we ask them, hey, if these are the important columns, without that, I cannot proceed with calculation, but these columns, I have the blank values in it. Is it okay? There are cases they will say, okay, but the missing values, you replace it with triple nine or some, some values, okay? So that um, later point in they can find out uh, how many number of uh, records were having missing values in it okay they'll give some default values and the next one is the appending the data yes uh, in this case um, let's say you want to you want to create a report wherein you want to show the monthly sales performance or so in that case uh, the data are available in uh, weekly files each week uh, related data they'll store in a separate file week one week two week three week four you need to append all the data into a single file and then you need to create the report. So in that kind of situation, we perform append operation. The intro, they'll ask you, what is the difference between append and merge? Any of don't worry, we will discuss it later point in time, okay? The next one is uh, removing the duplicate records. All the things, we'll take a look at it. And um, this one, we have seen it already once again. Uh, yeah, what we will do is we'll jump in here and then we will take the core data stop. Yes, it is there. Okay, here I just, um, I go to the Power BI, Power Query Editor, click on the Transform Data, open the Transform Data. So there are some cases, um, you have a text column also, right? In your existing uh, so data set, you have the text uh, data type or, um, uh, numeric data type, uh, you know, related. look here, the order ID is a text data type and ship date, but in the text column itself, right, uh, if you see the values, you have a plain text value will be there. It's something like a you know, customer feedback or something like that, okay? So in that kind of situation, you need to do the uh, text pre-processing also. Okay, now, 
we'll start with the simple basic thing here. Uh, in this case, uh, what I am going to do is um, we will take a look at. So currently, I am in the home ribbon. In the home ribbon, we can see the remove rows and the keep rows. So I just want to check: uh, Do I have any duplicate records in my data set or not? Right. So here I have an option like remove duplicates. Yes, it will remove the duplicates. Before removing the duplicates, best thing what we will do is we will check how many number of records are there in this data set. Click on the count rows that is available under the transform ribbon. We can see that 25,004 records are there. So I'm going to undo this um, step because now our job is over. All we need is we want to see the number of records. And this step is not required. I'm going to click it. So 25,004 records are there. I just go to the um, remove columns. Instead of going to the remove columns and blindly remove the uh, any duplicate records, sorry, um, blindly remove the duplicate records. First, I will check how many number of duplicate records are there. We need to report it to the customer. Okay. Uh, if you say I removed the duplicate records, so can you, is there any possibility that you can share the records that uh, that have duplicates? Okay, in that case, you will not have any proof, right? So go to the keep rows and then keep duplicates. Anything comes to data, definitely they will ask proof. Okay, show me, show me everything. Look here, this many number of records we have a duplicate values in it. Okay, we have a duplicates uh, in it. Okay, now we have seen almost four records, five records, right? Five records, we see duplicate records, but uh, when you look at this, the second and third record, null, null is there. And if you scroll towards the right side, the same thing we can see here, okay? And so now we have understood five records. So this, the record number two and three, we don't have any values at all in, in, in all the columns, right? None of the columns have any values in it. The second row and third row, uh, blank record. These are called blank records. Whereas the record one, a four and five, we could see the same record repeated it here. And importantly, when you go to the uh, sales column, the values are similar here. If you do aggregation on this sales column, what will happen The 2,309, uh, you know, you are going to add it to you know, uh, two more times, right? Three times you are adding the same value. Uh, it is not the correct one, right? So you are you, you are showing that uh, it will it will make you to think your sale is very high. You are really doing a great job. Actually, it is not, right? Because of duplicates, it is doing the triple count. It is counting the three records values. So it is uh, totaling the three records. Actually, it is a one record, okay? So hence, it is important that we are going to remove. So now we have explored. So these are the duplicate records are there. And then I'm going to undo this step. I go back here and then, uh, sorry, I go back to remove rows and here I'll say remove duplicates. Remove duplicates, fine. So the next one is, um, what is the next step? So we need to check um, whether all the duplicate records got uh, removed. Click on the count rows. Yes. We found uh, three records were having duplicates and two records were having blank records, right? So 2,000, uh, sorry, 25,004 records we, we have seen, but uh, only three records got deleted, right? The duplicated records, whereas the null blank record were, were not removed. So for that, I just go here and remove blank rows. I'm going to click on it. Now I just go and check the count rows. Yeah, blank rows, right? Um, 25,000 now. Actually, 25,004 records were there. Five records should have been removed, but uh, we could see that only one record got removed. We will see you know, why it has removed that way. And we will click on the drop down here. Can we see any null values? Nothing is there, but uh, we have something called uh, the data profiling. Okay, we can, we, we'll do some kind of data profiling. Uh, that one also will help us to understand if you have any error in any columns and also any, uh, you know, how much percentage of value data are there. For that, you need to go to the view ribbon. 
select the column call it you can see that 100% of the records or you know records in this column are having valid data in it so we don't see any issues so far so good and here we can see that less than 1% we have empty values in it okay empty values in it so far so good <clears throat> Okay, uh, that is fine. Now I just go to the home ribbon and again I just look at here. But here they did not give uh, keep blank rows, right? Uh, ideally, they should have mentioned it here. So, and if I do it one more time, let's see uh, what happens here. Remove blank rows and transform count rows. The same thing it shows. Yeah, I did not see if you have any null values in any column, right? That is the one will get displayed first. In this case, it is not there. Uh, we will go and check the same in the segment column. Look here, blank. Here, blank is there. Click on the load more. Blank, only one, uh, you know, so one, we have some blank records out there. So, so the segment column also we will be using it. We will go and check why uh, there is a blank, which record it has a blank. You see, it doesn't mean if you remove the blank records, all the blank went off, right? Still uh, blank values. In that case, the blank records are different from blank values in a column because all the columns, if you have blank values in it, that is called your blank record. But what will happen is there are cases not all the columns are blank, but only few columns have some blank values. In that case, that will not be taken care. We need to check it manually. Look here, blank. I just check, you know, which records. You know, these are the records. We can see blank values in the segment column. We need to ask the customer, hey, why these, you know, records? We could see these records were having blank values in it. So to identify this one, um, to identify the blanks in the, at the column level, the data profiling is really helpful, isn't it? Look here. Uh, the moment when I enable this option, column quality, I can see that the, these three statuses, valid percentage, error percentage, empty percentage. Column level, if you find any empty values, uh, how will you find out? That's a little, very difficult, right? So the, with the data profiling, it makes our a life simple. So less than one percentage, it is there. Very good. Okay, and then uh, this is this uh, this you know this requires some kind of intervention. Obviously, you need to share the data to the customer and ask them why it is. That is the reason why before you set up <clears throat> clear you know, st st set up with uh, creating the reports, make sure that uh, you know you are um, having the right data, the completeness. Of the data okay completeness of the data for example he is asking you to compare the quarter on quarter sales performance for the last three years make sure that last three years data you have in with you okay that is the one you need to first check it out <clears throat> and then uh, see if you don't check and if you blindly go ahead and create the report definitely the customer will say why did you not ask why did you not uh, you know do the um, due diligence before you start to the report so had he informed us earlier, we would have given you everything, right? So make sure that, uh, you know, you're, nothing is falling uh, through the crack. So you just uh, you know, verify with the customer. So, okay, fine. So we have uh, found only one column have blank values in it, the segment column. Okay, rest of them are fine. And we remove the, uh, the duplicate records. We remove the blank records. In the case of blank records, what happened, what we noticed was, uh, look here, I removed uh, blank rows. If I go here, in this case, remove duplicates. Um, okay, the previous step and not list of the remove matching items, field values, you know, the empty string null. Okay, we put empty string as a null. Okay. Uh, not list is empty. Okay, it simply exclude the blank values. Okay. For example, I'm going to exclude this one now. One second. See, now the question is, we found three blank values. Sorry, two blank records, right? 
and but after we remove the blank uh, rows using this option using this option re remove blank rows um, we could see that only one record got removed i'm going to undo this step so now we will go and check uh, in the last you make sure that you are selecting the last step and uh, click on the count rows now we will see 25500 25000 is there right remove rows we were having 25,004. Uh, yeah, it's correct only, right? Correct, correct. correct. So uh, out of that, uh, but we were having three uh, duplicate records. See, of the three duplicate records, it has to remove only two, right? If it removes the all the three records, it has gone. It is correct. Okay, so out of the three uh, duplicate records, it removed two. And it retained the, you know, one record. Okay, maybe that's the uh, base record, okay? And the remaining uh, two records, blank records, it, yeah, it did the correct job, correct. Are you able to understand or not? I just write it here. We were having 25,004 records in total, out of which we found three records were duplicate. Duplicate. They say two, two, two is there. If you remove all the three, then what, what will happen? You will not get the original data, right? So let's say you have one, at least of the three, one you should retain it. So these two are duplicate, removed it, it retained one. Okay, hence we have, we were left with two records and then two blank records were there. The two blank records also removed successfully. So two plus two, four records in total got removed. We are left with 25,000, it's correct only. Sorry for the confusion. Okay, fine. So now remove the duplicates, remove the blank rows and uh, filter rows. Fine. So these are the steps. And next one is um, I just go to the. <clears throat> there are situations you may have to remove the first rows. Okay, you want to remove the top um, 10 rows or top 15 rows. Why should I remove top 10 or 15 rows? Maybe when you look at the data, you may you might have noticed that in the top uh, 10 records have blank values in it. This is another way of removing the records. For example, top 10 records, uh, I can see the from the beginning, right? So top 10 records, I can see the blank values in all the columns. Hence, remove the top 10 records. This is one scenario. The other scenario is, Mm, for example, you wanted to create a sample data. You don't want to use the entire data. Okay. So in that case, um, for testing purpose, you don't want to use all the data. Let's say you are working with uh, 25 million records. You don't need all the data to do some kind of um, prototyping. Okay. Because uh, if you work with huge volume, it's a time consuming. You just want to check whether uh, certain visuals can be created. Uh, certain tasks can be done or not, right? So randomly you want to check it out. So in that kind of situation also, you can delete the top 10 records and similarly bottom 10 records also you can delete it. So top 10 and um, bottom rows, remove bottom rows, top n rows, bottom n rows, remove alternate rows. There are situations, yes, I want to remove the alternate rows. I don't want to have the, all that. If you remove the top 10 rows, right, it, your data will be more biased. The sample, I'm talking about the statistics sample. You know what is sample, right? Sample is, um, we don't work with the, the population data, huge volume of data. What we do is we take the sample from the population, only a certain number of records you take it. With that, you are going to infer the population. So for that kind of situation, sampling also, it is, this is helpful. But if you remove the top 10 records or top 100 records, top 1 million records, bottom 1 million records, if you remove it, there could be chances your sample may, might get biased. Okay. So in that kind of situation also, you know, it, it will not be good. But there are situations like, let's see, you can see that uh, first five records or 10 records have duplicate values. Then now you are, you'll be asking this one. So I have removed duplicate option. Why should I use it? It's up to you. This is another option. Okay. Two purpose. One is to remove the blank rows. Other one is uh, to um, 
what is that, uh, to remove the blank rows and for sampling purpose, we can do it. But to sampling, we don't do it, um, you know, top or bottom. So you may have to remove the alternate rows randomly. You will first row to remove. For example, row three, uh, row three, you remove it. Uh, now from row three, how many number of rows? I want to remove four. So row three to one, two, three, four. Okay, and uh, number of rows to keep the rest of the data. What what I say, you know, let's say, you know, I just put big number in the interest of three and four, two, five, three, three, and um, two, two, seven, five, two, two, seven, three, two, right? Yeah, it got removed, okay? So if you want to remove the alternate rows, that is also possible here. That is also possible here, okay? And the blank rows, you can remove errors. In case of any errors in your data set, you can do it, but make sure that you are not going to use this option. Only in the worst case scenario, you can use it, okay? You don't have time. Uh, to uh, do the troubleshooting by the specific column have duplicate well or the, sorry errors in it right in that case uh, and in the interest of time you want to go ahead and proceed with creating some you know the report right so you can see that for example only two records you could see some errors but that one that errors you noticed in the columns which you don't use it okay probably you can remove those columns okay the other um, workaround is um, uh, you can see that uh, the quantity, this, you know, the quantity is just they purchased only one item. Two, that is not going to impact your uh, report uh, insight. Okay, if you remove the, you know, one, one thing, right? It is not good. In that case, you can take a risk by removing that uh, rows. So, you know, very well, let's, you know, product uh, six and four and product seven, uh, you know, the customer bought only one quantity. And I can see some other problem in other column because of which uh, I can see errors. But with errors, if you apply, close and apply, it will throw an error, okay? So, but for that, you note it down. Okay, probably I will, once I create the report, I will tell the management because they want the report needs to be created immediately. So go ahead and then you tell them, so they, along with this, uh, you know, we need to add one more quantity. I removed it because of some errors. Give me some time, I will fix that, and then I will give you the other report. So, but this is the, um, pick, this is the, the current, current picture, you can tell them, okay? Removing the blank rows, removing the duplicate records, remove the errors, that is possible. Removing the alternate rows, top and bottom rows, that is possible. And here, you know, it is not showing the key blanks uh, to view the blank records. We can check it out here. So how do you check if you have a blank records in a data set? All the columns, if you find empty, 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 right? So that itself tells us, you know, there are some blank uh, rows are there. With the data profiling, right? So that you can find out, and uh, you can keep the top rows instead of removing the uh, records. Just keep top ten records, thousand records. Don't remove them. Okay. Uh, with that records only, I'm going to proceed with creating my reports, or I wanted to start do some kind of data profiling. Sorry, data prototyping. Right. I want to do some kind of prototyping, and keep bottom rows, keep range of rows like alternate rows, right? You can, I don't want to keep uh, the top or bottom 10 records. Instead, I want to select only the specific records, the range of rows, that, that is also possible. Keep duplicates, yes. Um, show me the duplicates and keep errors. In case of any error, let it be there because we wanted to verify at later point in time why the error got surfaced. But usually what we do is, um, we will fix the errors, but there are situations in the interest of time. For example, they wanted to create some Hadoc report. What do you mean by Hadoc report? Hadoc report is based on some observations that you had it on as the daily reports or uh, the reports which you already scheduled it, right? Um, in that, if, they, if you find something wrong, what we'll do is we do some kind of uh, further analysis. In that kind of situation, we create HADA, you know, reports that is called Hadoc reports. Okay, on a need basis, we create some reports. See, if there are certain reports are mandatory. So these are the reports should be created. For example, every week, uh, the 200 reports to be generated that needs to be shared across the different um, line of business or the department. Very good. 
but uh, when uh, when when a specific stakeholder when he was going to report he found something wrong okay he says hey, you know so can i know the uh, reason why we can see a dip in the revenue in the specific region can you take all the item wise um, itemized uh, transactions and show me so for that uh, you know to meet his requirement you create another report that is called ad hoc requirement okay there are some cases yes the existing reports are not sufficient in addition to that i need uh these two reports can you create it that is called your ad hoc reports ideally they could have kept here you know keep um, blank rows right so that feature is helpful probably we suggest that maybe some other reason they did not give okay now let's move ahead with uh, exploring the data profiling option here so what i will do is i'm going to you um close and apply this one now you understood the very very basic thing right so how do we find out the duplicate records and uh, how do we remove the duplicate records how do we remove the blank rows everything is option for everything option is available you don't have to write any queries here okay your manager tells you here is one simple uh, assignment for you all your manager tells you blank records if you have it you remove it in addition to that let's you know there are some business columns like um, the sales and quantity should not have any blank value in it let's say your repo is a blank with zero fine uh, before that itself right so you know uh, why we need to have a blank value in sales and quantity column he says to take these two business columns and then the order num order num order id and order date so take only both those columns uh, so for in your sorry uh, keep all the columns but based on the four columns alone if you find any duplicate records sorry if you find any blank values order id order date and uh, sales and quantity only in this four column you have to check if there are any blank values then you need to reject it or you need to um, filter it you need to filter it and uh, share it with your management how do you do that how do you do that the question is uh, see we we understood how to remove the blank values it's pretty cool job if you can go to the remove rows remove blank rows blank rows we know very well uh, all the columns have blank values in it that is called your blank record if you scroll towards the left and right you can see as you know there are two records uh, it doesn't have any values in it then why should i keep those records you remove that that is one aspect um, but uh, that will remove the blank records or, which means all the columns that have blank will remove it but still there there are chances that your columns have missing values in it specific columns like a segment column i have shown you it has a missing values in it but here this the business requirement is i want to check order id order date sales and quantity column uh, you know when you take these four columns and check if these four columns have any blank values in it so order id is blank and order date is blank and um, quantity is blank and uh, the sales but rest of the columns you have values in it okay so on a based on the subset of the columns if i have any blank values how do you remove it that is an assignment give it a try okay okay next one is um, i'm going to load another data set for the sake of simplicity
Okay, this is the data set I'm going to load it. I go to the data view directly and then yeah, sales by customer. Yes, it has got loaded with data. You can see the customer name is a text data type. Okay, and uh, here we can see that if you click on it, it is a text data type. Unit sold is whole number. Sales is also whole number and active. This is a true false. This is a Boolean data type. This is a text data type. Okay, fine. And here, uh, what I am going to do is uh, I will open the Power Query Editor. We'll see how we can do the data profiling. That is also one of the important tasks, but it has been ignored by many of the uh, people, okay? And go to view ribbon. So already we have enabled this option. Um, can we see anything here? Yeah, empty is 11 percentage. Valid uh, values in this column are 18 percentage. And here we don't see any empty value. So all the columns we can see almost um, the empty values in it and accept the one. Fine. So here I just uh, select the column profile. The moment when I you know, selected this option, column profile, we can see the column uh, the statistics. For these, uh, for these values in this column, it gives me statistics. Along with that, we can see a distribution. With this distribution, we can quickly make out that this customer is a frequent purchaser. His name is appearing more than one time. So it's a taller bar. So he's a frequent purchase. He's visiting my shop more frequently. He's purchasing it more frequently in my shop. Rest of the customers are uh, not uh, you know, as frequently visiting as a baron. Okay, so how do we interpret the statistics? Uh, count how many number of records are there in total in this one, nine records are there. Okay, and error, can you see any error or empty record? So the empty, if you see surprising, it shows zero here. Though we can see some blank value here, it shows zero here. So why is that? And then if you see distinct seven and unique six, what is the difference between distinct and unique? If you are a SQL developer, you know what is distinct, right? It gives you the unique value only. In this case, why did they uh, come up with the, you know two different terms? Distinct itself has to show the, the unique values. Uh, then what is the difference between unique and distinct? Here you can see seven, six here, and empty string is one. Look here, we got the answer. The If you have a blank value in a text column, that doesn't mean it's a blank. It is an empty string, empty string one. So that is the reason why he did not put, you know, uh, he did not put anything here in the case of empty. In the case of numeric column, let's say this is a numeric column, then it will have put one here because you have one blank value here, okay? That we will test it immediately with this one. Unit so look here, null, how many null values are there? Three, right? It says empty three, okay? And if you go back here, null is nothing but uh, blank values, okay? But in this case, um, if you put null, what is going to happen? You just give it a try, that one also, okay? And empty string one and um, minimum is, null which means empty string and maximum is true t is true here okay fine in the alphabet uh, in the, this is the one the last one right compared to all the values so r followed by r t comes rest of them are you know just before r right and the alphabet so t is the maximum minimum is the empty string and the empty string we have one value is there and we don't see any empty value here okay don't uh, think that if you see any blank value, that doesn't mean that is empty. That is empty string, the text. Okay, there is an exception to the text data type. Okay, next one is the distinct seven and unique six. What is the difference between these two? Can someone tell me what is the difference between these two? What is the difference between distinct and unique? Unique, it will not, as the name suggests, right? Uh, you know what is uh, unique in RDBMS? It should not have duplicate values, isn't it? Unique column should not have any duplicate. If you have duplicate, we'll simply ignore it. Okay, in this case, uh, you know, what are the values are non-duplicate? Larry, sorry. 
So we can see that uh, Larry is not duplicated and true is not duplicated, 22 is not, but Baron is duplicated, simply it will ignore that. So only five is there. How come it shows six? It takes into account of the empty string also. So six values. In case of any duplicate values, it will simply ignore it. Whereas in the case of distinct, it is same as your unit, but it can take into account of the value that have duplicates, but it will can even though you have duplicate values, it will take into account of only one value. Baron is appearing three times. It's duplicated, but still Baron, it takes into account of Baron only. If somebody is asking you, right, listen, all these are, you know, person name, forget about 22, let's say 22, you have something like Ashok, Raj, all the names are there. If I ask you how many customers uh, they bought products, you know, they purchased, uh, you know, in this month, they say this is a monthly data. In this uh, month, how many customers they purchased, you will include Baron also, right? Just because Baron name appears multiple times, that doesn't mean um, uh, right, you need to exclude it. You will take into account a Baron also, but you will not do the triple counting. Okay, Baron, Larry, and other things, right? Other six record and barren. But here, when it comes to programming, right, it takes into account of the, the, the empty string also, okay? So that is what you need to remember. So unique as the name suggests, it, remove, it will not take into account of any duplicated values. Whereas distinct also somewhat similar to unique, but in case of any values are duplicated, it will not take uh, into account of all the duplicated values. Instead, it will take into account of only one value of that. So now we understood what is distinct, uh, difference between distinct and unique. Okay, fine. And apart from this, right, uh, if you select the numeric value, uh, you can see that the average, average unit sold here itself, you can see it minimum, maximum, uh, you can see it minimum is zero, maximum is 15. Okay, and with this, you can make out in case of anything wrong is there. Let's say if you find something like in the unit sold, thousand, Maybe due to some data entry issue, right? No one will buy 1,000 units. Let's, let's think that way, okay? So there's something odd. You can find out the one odd man out of the columns with the help of max also, right? And R is 8.33, find standard deviation. These are status things. So if the standard deviation is too high, that means a lot of variation is there. How many even values are there? Odd values. The same thing is applicable for the sales column also. In this case, we have three empty values. It shows three. The rest of them are same. Next one is the Boolean data type. So Boolean uh, here also shows the nine values are there in the Boolean column, active. And error, we don't see any error. And empty, we see five records. Null, null is empty. Five empty values are there. Distinct is three. And um, the true, false, null. So true is appearing more than one time. Of the you know three times right three values it takes you know, only one and true false null three and unique is one excluding all the duplicate values null is appearing more than one time excluded true appears multiple times only one unique value false is there so hence it shows one here true is three here true three times appears false one time appears okay this is how we get, but in this case, you can see that I you know this is the true is appearing multiple times. How many number of active customers? So for that, uh, Kirti, you need to use different logic. So the Kirti's question is, um, how do we know that uh, Baron is the same customer uh, and not three different customers? So for that, you need to uh, use some other uh, column, something like. Um, social security number or something like that. Okay, with that you can find out. Okay. So for that, you'll have to use more than one column. Okay. So you'll have to use social security number. You cannot literally go by single column. Okay. So you know the, the, um, uh, the, the RDBMS, we have something called primary key column, right? Primary column should not have duplicate values in it. But along with that, the, there are scenarios where um, you will be uh, assigning the unique values for the same customer more than one time also mistakenly. Are you able to understand? There are scenarios 
you see in the case of rtbms uh, let's say this is your ssn social security number that is very unique right aadhar number in usa ssn number in india aadhar number aadhar number is unique for each customer let's assume that uh, you know the, the aadhar number uh, for each customer aadhar number uh, you know is, is different because aadhar number is unique but there are some cases let's assume that hypothetically okay the same aadhar number is given to another guy also mistakenly how do you check whether the aadhar numbers assigned to the citizens are uniquely given so none of the customers have duplicate aadhar number how will you find out for that you will have to use the customer name and this contact number and uh, the aadhar number multiple columns you compare and do it okay that is different thing altogether we will discuss that later point in time so this one will help you to understand So how many unique values you have or many distinct values it gives you some statistics about each and every column this one will help you to quickly understand for example see look here in this case i'll say you know this a region column uh, or the country column in the country column when you click on it the distinct it shows uh, 12 you know very well you are doing business only in eight uh, countries how come 12 then there is something inconsistent values are there what could be the inconsistent values somewhere they put united states somewhere they put usa so you can find out any inconsistencies are there in my data set with the distinct values. if you want to that kind of analysis uh, then you need to use the uh, you know you need to join more than one column you need to do it okay so best thing you can use uh, the sql queries that is enough in this case the assumption is the baron is same here okay all the three uh, names of baron the same customer only visited more than one time so here we are talking about data profiling okay with the data profiling we want to understand that probably you can have an additional column like uh, aadhar number right so aadhar number you check uh, the aadhar number and uh, aadhar number column you see it can you find any the you know duplicate values with distinct and unique itself you can find out the unique it should have whatever so in the case of aadhar number both the values should be same isn't it let's say your aadhar number column the unique values and distinct values should be same okay if if if, if we find something like this then something wrong in your aadhar number with that aadhar number just by eyeballing it we can find out for example baron this baron they have given some aadhar number this baron belongs to other aadhar number other aadhar number with that you can find out but uh, with this you can identify how many you know unique values are there how many duplicates are then you can find out so let's say in your aadhar number column it shows 66 0 also 6 then it is clear that um you know the uh so here it is 6 here it is 7 let's say uh, in the sorry in the case of aadhar number the unique is 6 but in the customer name it shows unique 6 and distinct 7 with that also you can find out right right close and apply so now you understood what is data profiling first step is you know right, it is always recommended through the data profiling first check uh, do you have and it's for that you need to have the domain knowledge like i said uh, you know very well you are doing a business only in eight countries that knowledge you should have it. and when you look at the uh, statistics you can see that it shows 12 we are damn sure we do export import only the eight countries right so it is illegal if you do it with uh, other countries uh, without uh, proper having without having proper the export related uh, thing right registration and all okay this is the first step second step is yes like i said uh, the common data transformation we just go here and then check uh, do we have anything any duplicate record how do we remove the duplicate records and how do we subset the record and remove the record columns for example row dot id is artificial number is kind of a primary key column it is not helpful here you just simply remove it because it is a transaction data set uh, you can remove that uh, you know those kind of columns because those columns are nowhere helpful uh, for your analytics okay remove the unnecessary columns and uh, 
the data type issues we already discussed how to convert them and in the sales we can see that and you can add additional columns if if required okay and you know those are the kind of things that we need to do it for example uh, the let's say the customer name is available in the same table or let's say in the product name column the product name is there along with the categories there you want to split the column so so, so that in such a way uh, the product name should be available in one column and the category should be available in another column you should not have the mix of both in a single column that is what um, that is what we do it as part of the split and uh, for that i have some other example i will show you a little later okay now what i will do is um, yeah i will just go here and the same thing i'm going to do it this one i already explained you the the format is not consistent with respect to the values so i just replace this one by forward slash i'm going to hit okay it's a month date year format using local i'm going to change the date data type It's a USA date format. I'm going to change it to the United States. And I'm going to hit OK. OK, there are no errors here. OK, good. So now uh, we want to extract only the year from this column. Let this column be there. But I want to extract year, month, date, quarter. How can I do that? So for that, uh, you can go here. In the for a, okay, here I selected this an add column. When you go to the add column ribbon, you will find something called date, and here you select the year separately, and then go back here for a date. You select it again, and then you can do the quarter, quarter of the year, quarter of the year, end of quarter. All the features are available here. And the month, month, quarter, year, you know, extracted separately. Okay. And if you say, how do I know uh, is this uh, ordered year or uh, shipped year, right? Something else. For example, the year end, uh, let's you know someone ordered on uh, 31st December 2022, but we shipped on uh, the year 2023, January. Okay. So in that case, if you want it, then you can make it uh, ORD, ORD underscore year, ORD underscore quarter, ORD underscore month, okay? And uh, there are other scenarios uh, where you want to create additional columns. Look here, in, even in this case, I'm going to do the replace this one. Replace the values uh, of I find by forward slash, I'm going to hit okay. I have one good data set I will share you with all. Uh, that you can give it a try, uh, you know, in the next five days. So now I wanted to understand what is the duration, the shipment duration. We have the ship date and order date. If you subtract the order date from ship date, you will get the duration, how many days we took to ship it, right? So in that kind of situation, the add column and uh, custom column, we have something called custom column, click on the custom column, simply select the ship date uh, minus order date. Since, but before you do subtraction addition, make sure that the date columns are in the date data type. Sorry, order date. I'm going to hit okay. So this is the duration, okay. And here ABC one two three. There we let's make it uh, the decimal number. You can rename the column by double clicking on it. Shipment duration.
Fine. So anyhow, I will share the other data set that involves a lot of things. Okay. You just give it a try. The volume of the data is also very high. It's a very interesting one. And but um, if you think it's too early to do that, then you hold on. Okay. And you can do it later. Those of you have already watched my all my videos earlier, right? And if you I'm I'm free at home, I'm not working anywhere. So you can uh, still go ahead and do that because you are the candidate for working on that uh, kind of data set. And then you get back to me about your insights. I will give you some questions. You do explore the data and you come back with your answers. Okay. Okay. The next one is uh, I'm going to close and apply. Reshaping the data. Apart from uh, the removing the duplicate records and um, keeping only the relevant records, keeping only the relevant columns, renaming the columns, adding a new column. It is uh, so we what we do is we do something else called reshaping the data. So we do pivoting and unpivoting everything. Okay, I just go to the transform data. Yes, Nisha, I'll share it on. Yeah, you are the one, uh, you, you watched almost all my videos, right? Then I'll share that uh, data set. Let me see if you can get some good insights. Good. So here I'm going to um, select this one, expense. But I will share it to all, don't worry. Uh, Yes, uh, Raji and Sri, I will share it to all. Okay, don't worry. But the only thing is, uh, those people already watched my video, they'll be in a question to do it. If you think you can do it, still you can do it. Okay. It is not a rocket science, but it requires uh, more uh, knowledge on the Power Query Editor also. Okay, look here, this is my data set. I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to load the expenses data. So here, uh, this data set consists of uh, year wise month wise expenses how much expenses we you know we incur and if you see in the year we can see only three years of data we have it but each year only nine month data are available fine this is the data set given by someone else and they want you to uh, reshare the data or explore the data and get back to you uh, any insight can you find any insight or something like that Okay, here I have loaded the data. I just uh, click on, look here, can you all see queries here, three queries. So these three queries were called as a table in the, in the Power BI desktop, right? So sales W, so next to that you can see the icon, the table icon, but the, what are the, whatever the uh, file names or uh, tables, uh, right? Uh, the, the, whatever the uh, files are considered as a table there, it's all considered as a, Query here because the power query editor ends it considers everything as a query. Okay, now I'm going to select the transform ribbon. Let us explore how to do the pivoting. Before I, I jump in and doing the pivoting, I just uh, select this query, expense query, right click on it. I'm going to duplicate this query because I don't want to touch the original one. If once I reshape the data, once I do the pivoting, I want to compare this one with the original data. For that, I just want to leave it, uh, this one as it is. I'm not going to touch this one. I just took the you know bag, the duplicate of this one. Guys, don't ever do this because in the real world, you know, the volume of the data is very, very huge. Mistakenly also don't duplicate it. Okay, for demonstration purpose, I did. But even in the case of real world, you know, there are cases where you can um, find some small set of data. So in that kind of situation, you can duplicate this one. Why should I duplicate this? Because if you want to compare with the modified or uh, the transformed uh, data, right, with the original one, we can use it. But still, you can go and click on the source and you can see it. But still, uh, if you, uh, you know, if you have to do too much of formatting everything, better uh, you take a duplicate of this query. Now, I just uh, click on the pivot. What is pivot? You want to convert the rows into columns right i want to convert the rows into columns so for that uh, see my reporting requirement is something like uh, you know the month expenses along with that uh, you display the uh, 2020 year column as a column 2021 as a column 2022 as a column 
okay this is what the requirement okay so the 2021 um all right so what is the uh, expenses and 2021 you know you want me to so instead of displaying so look here in the case of year everything is appearing as a rows right so i selected the year i'm going to click on the pivot and then here i'm going to select expenses values column okay and if you select the advanced option you want to perform what kind of aggregation sum i'm going to use sum alone it looks so compact all the rows now it became a column so now you can see in 2020 alone how much expenses we incurred across these months in 2021 across these months how much expense is being you know being incurred that is what we can see it here this is what you are pivoting it's pretty simple i just uh, rename it for the sake uh, sorry um And next one is I'm going to select the expenses here. And again, I'm going to, in this, this time, I'm going to click on reference. There is something called reference. Reference is really good. Okay. It is not a duplicate of this data set. Okay. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the unpivot. So here also I'm going to do the, okay. What I will do is, um, I'm going to do the pivot first. Okay, your question is, uh, you won't do it with month. Okay, so if that is the case, um, Sri, you need to select the month column. Okay, you are, yeah, we will continue with the pivot. Okay, so click on pivot. And here you need to specify the, the values. Okay, the values are numeric column. Okay, the expenses. I'm going to hit okay now. So now you will get month one, month two, look here, month one, two, three. So here you have only three years. Now it got reduced. The number of records got reduced. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But you need to scroll towards the right side and left side if you want to see it. But whereas here it is pretty compact, right? The pivot is pretty compact. But uh, if you want this way, uh, if you think this is a compact because only three rows are there. Fine, we can use this. You can select the month column, whichever column that you want to pivot it. That you that column you select it first, and then click on the pivot column, and then select the numeric column which you want to see the aggregated values. Okay, fine. This is uh, also pivot. I'm going to rename it as a pivot expenses. And the next one is I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to use this one, the same thing. It's a, I'm going, this time I'm going to use a reference. Okay. So this time what I do is I want to unpivot. Let's say my manager says, hey, you don't want to see, uh, you know, I, I don't have patience to see uh, by scrolling towards the right and left. Instead, you need to make all the columns as rows. So in that case, you need to select all the columns. How do I select? How, how do I select multiple columns? You need to hold the control key and then select it. If you don't hold the control key while selecting it, you will not be able to select multi columns. Now I selected all the columns which I want to unpivot and go to the unpivot uh, columns option. Click on it. Look here, it got unpivoted. So this is again, you need to rename it here. This is your um, month. This is your expenses. This looks uh, exactly like our original data, isn't it? This looks exactly. Like. So now if you click on the drop down here, you have two more options. When you simply um, select all the columns that you want to unpivot it, and then if you click on it here, it does the unpivot, like how it did here. Sorry, I did it one more time. 
Okay, so this is how it creates that one. Okay, and you have two more options here. Which situation we use pivot and see there is it's not like a um, scenario. Okay, you know if it depends on the requirement. Sometimes what will happen is um, we cannot um, get insight uh, just with the given data set. There is a question: what scenario that I use it? You know here there is scenarios that are not comes into picture. When you look at the data, you need to you know right in this case 20, 21, 20, 22. Let's say you have multiple years. Uh, right, so you need to 12 months, each month 12 months, it's a 10 years data, you need to scroll down and then, uh, down and then see, right? So we are simply reshaping data. Sometimes when you look at the data in different shape, you might tend to get different insights and also it makes your life easier. That's all. Here there is not much, today, you know, scenario and so on coming into picture. This is called re reshaping the data set. That's all. Fine. So here, uh, okay, I just take the same thing again. I just uh, create the reference here. Simply, you can share this report to your money. If you ask, hey, can you do the pivoting and show me? Yes, that is possible. You can do it and then share it with him. That's all. Okay. Depends on the requirement, reporting requirement. <clears throat> so here, in this case, the same thing. Look here. Instead of selecting each and every column manually and then do the unpivot, we have another cool, you know, super cool feature. Unpivot other columns. Select the column which you don't want to do unpivot and click on the say, you know, rest second one. What it does is it does the unpivot on the rest of the columns automatically. Instead of manually going and selecting all the columns that you want to unpivot, this is a super cool feature. That's all. And the third one is something like unpivot only selected columns. I just want to unpivot only the selected columns. In that kind of situation, you can use that one. That is somewhat similar to this one only. That is somewhat similar to this one only. Unpivot only selected columns. Something like you select all the columns. Unpivot only. It's same as your first option. But there are some cases uh, you can do unpivot on a specific column. One or two columns. That's alone you can do it. That depends on your requirement, okay? But oh, the, the first one is the default option. The second one makes your life pretty simple, isn't it? You select the column which you don't want to unpivot. And you have so many columns needs to be selected to do the unpivot. In that kind of situation is very much helpful. Select those columns that you don't want to unpivot. And your the columns are less uh, when it comes to the, um, the columns that you don't want to unpivot. You select that one. In our case, we have to select only one column which we don't want to unprivate. When And then if you click on it, the rest of the columns, it does the unprivate. This is pretty simple. Okay. Next one is the reverse rows. I just selected this. For example, yeah, we'll go to the pivot expenses. And the reverse rows, the opposite. The it it will simply reverse all the rows. The ninth uh, month will become uh, it will get displayed in the first place. Eighth month will get displayed here. That is what reverse. Look here, this is what reverse. And if you click on it one more time, again it will get reversed. So what scenario where that we do reverse and uh, reverse? This is just for exploration purpose. Okay, here there is no scenario, right? Not much scenario is involved here. And okay, uh, she's question is, uh, is there any way uh, can I do the reverse on a specific column? No, that is not possible. Here they mentioned rows. It is not reverse columns, right? Uh, reverse rows. If I want to do a reverse on a specific column, how do I do that? So for that, only option is you can do sort ascending and descending. That's all, right? Uh, you don't have any other. But uh, sort ascending and descending, it will show the data in ascending and descending order. But if you want to display only well, it is not there. Probably we'll recommend Microsoft to include that. Okay. And the next one is the transpose. When you click on transpose, it simply rotates the entire data. So all the uh, columns got converted to rows. And if you click on it one more time, again it will rotate it back. You will get back your original data. So here uh, are we getting? Yeah. So the same thing, right? Yeah. 
So once again, here in this case, we get to call him. Okay, 20, 21, 22. Okay, we are not supposed to compare uh, this one with that one. It's simply reverse the rows. So our original data, I took the pivot expenses, right? This is what our pivoted uh, columns. What happens when you click on the transform? It simply converts all the rows into columns. If you see the one, one will appear here, two will appear here, three will appear here, something will look here, the transpose table, one, two, three, for even the other column, second column also we got converted as rows. Uh, sorry, the columns. So all the columns, all the columns values got converted as a rows. And if you click on it one more time, all the columns will become rows. So why do I need to do transpose? Uh, and tra this is for our exploration purpose only. If you look at the data in different um, shape, there could be chances you might tend to get uh, some additional insights. It's all up to you. But there are cases, yes, I want to, uh, this is my original data, but uh, I want to store the data like this. Okay, I want to use the data, something like this. So don't, uh, you know, so in that case, what you do is you convert uh, this one uh, using pivot uh, option, and then you click on close and apply. In that case, what will happen is uh, you can use this table directly for your visuals. For that purpose also, we can use pivot. See, the same thing you can do it with matrix visual itself. With matrix, you can do the uh, pivoting, unpivoting in a very pretty simple way. But this is another option. Here itself, we can do it. What is that? Is there any way can I do it with uh, more than one column? In pivot, okay. If I select these two pivot column, is that what you are saying? If I select expenses, okay, you won't display the year, um, month, and right. It will not do it. It will not do it. It will get confused. If you select more than one column, what is the objective here? You want to come, you know, convert both the year. See here, the pivot, please understand what is pivot does. It convert your rows into columns. Uh, for that purpose, what you do is you can use transpose, but transpose it does for all the three columns, right? <laughs> but your question is, okay, I want to do, but tell me one thing. If I select these two columns together, Sri, what is going to happen? The 2020 will, 2020 will get displayed in separate column. 2021 uh, will get displayed in 2022. But a month uh, will get separated here, right? Will get displayed here. If you display month also in the columns, okay? In that case, what will happen is uh, nine months data you are displaying in one row itself, whereas the year uh, you have the values for uh, 12 months, right? Sorry, nine months. This value actually will get displayed nine months. But uh, instead, if you show it everything in a single one, that is not the right thing, isn't it? Yeah, so here itself, look here. Uh, in the pivot expenses, sorry, here. Next one is you want to use uh, the month column, right? Okay, now the month column got selected. And if you want to pivot on this on this data set, and here, you, how, how will you select the numeric column? Your numeric column got splitted as three different things, right? 20, 20, 21, 22. The numeric values on three different columns. You cannot select more than one uh, numeric column here. Okay, so if you select only 20, 20, and if you do it this way, so 20, 21, 22 will remain as it is. Month 1, month 2, month 3, month 4. It, it will cause some kind of confusion. And uh, end of the day, you do not know whether it is a 20 year, 2020s data. Okay. So though it gives you the flexibility in terms of doing the pivoting for any specific column, uh, but we need to, uh, we need to rationalize whether uh, if I do the 
if I do the pivot on this column, does it really make sense? In this case, yes, 2020. Uh, uh, sorry, in that case, I'm selected the month, right? So, but where is the 2020? You'll get confused. So, if you tell them the 2020 data is available here, and uh, if they ask you, what is this one? Is the month one, month two, month three, four? How do I make sure it's a month one, month two? Can you display month one, month two along with this? And how will you do that? So, that is a confusion, okay? Uh, you know, don't overuse it, don't underuse it. Okay, wherever it is really required, you can use it. Okay. So what we learned today, we learned uh, the how to reduce the rows with in the home ribbon. We, we understood uh, remove columns, so the key rows and remove rows. You know, all these options that belongs to these options we explored, and then we learned how to do the uh, transpose, right? How to do the transpose, how to do the reverse rows how to pivot the columns, uh, pivot the data set and convert the rows into columns is pivot and convert your columns into rows called your unpivot. In unpivot, it said there are three options. We explored that as well. With this, I'm going to wrap up. I will share the data set. All of you uh, give it a try. And those of you already watched my all videos, you are good to go with uh, completing that assignment. Those of you uh, are able to be familiar with the rest of the topics, wait for some time. Give it, uh, give it a try, right? Give it a try. See how best you can do, right? That is what I would say. That's a very good data set. I will share it, don't worry. That's a loan-related data. I will share it, don't worry. Any questions so far? Okay, yeah. So next week onwards, we'll increase the duration also. Don't worry, okay? Fine. So I'm going to upload the video. Don't worry. I will, obviously, Sri, I will share the, uh, the file also. Oh, yeah, we'll discuss that, uh, Kirti, yeah, somehow I forgot that. We'll discuss it in the next session, okay?